You want an arcade game with two guns and a steering wheel? Lucky and Wild. You want an arcade game that rips off 80s buddy cop movies? Lucky and Wild. You want an arcade game where you drive through a mall shooting drug dealers? Lucky and Wild. You want a game where dynamite is parachuted from helicopters, common thugs have experimental laser weapons, and hot cat women repair your sports car? Lucky and Wild. I'm James Lucky Rolf. And I'm Justin Wild Silverman. And together, we're going to review one of Justin's favorite arcade games. Sure. But first, a message from our sponsor. Anytime Justin asks me to talk about a game with him, I gotta prepare myself by drinking a bottle of wine. And thanks to this video's sponsor, Bright Cellars, I've got six to choose from. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine box subscription that pairs you with a variety of wine flavors you'll actually like, removing the guessing game that we all foolishly partake in while purchasing wine. The quiz on their website asks you a series of simple questions like what kind of flavors you enjoy and, hey man, red or white? Red or white, man! And even if you're a beer drinker like the nerd, you'll still find a wine you'll like. Based on your answers, they'll give you a few recommendations, and if you want to try them out, Bright Sellers will ship them to you. It's that easy. So if you'd like to give them a try and get 50% off your first six bottle box, just head over to brightsellers.com slash cinemassacre, or click the link in the description below. Namco released Lucky and Wild back in 93 when action movies were mega blockbusters. It was created by Yutaka Kanoe at Namco, who also worked on Tank Battalion, Point Blank, and Time Crisis. He wanted to mimic the buddy cop action subgenre. Get out of the way, Tango and Cash. Hit the brakes, Starsky and Hutch. Go suck a lemon, Riggs and Murtog. Here comes Lucky and Wild. Sure, the name is very cliché, but it makes sense too. Yutaka Kanoe wanted both characters' names to be in the title, because the show Chips is known as Joe and Ponch in Japan. So, Lucky and Wild. That's their names, and that's what they are. Lucky and Wild. It had to be super cliché to ride on the buddy cop genre. The no-nonsense, sophisticated detective paired with the trigger-happy surfer dude maniac. They really nailed that concept too. Lucky and Wild is even an acronym for LAW. Nice touch. Speaking of the law, it carried the Winners Don't Use Drugs slogan splash screen after a law was passed making it mandatory on imported arcade games. The object of the game is for Lucky and Wild to take down a crime syndicate. They gotta capture six bad guys who are into bad guy stuff like drugs, guns, and the experimental laser weapons we mentioned before. The gameplay looks like if Final Lap and Steel Gunner had a love child. Now before getting into the gameplay, I really want to spend some time talking about the cabinet itself. It really stands out in an arcade. This machine screams, just come and play me! Sit down and take a load off. This slab of wooden metal is pretty unique. Here we have a full driving setup with two guns where the artwork makes it look like an actual car. There's even bullet casings on the dashboard. It has a pretty good presentation. Except that all the artwork of Lucky and Wild themselves are laughable. In the game sprites, they look pretty good, but on the cabinet, they look, well, different. Duh, I'm riled. I'm looking for the bad guy. And it's also interesting that the steering wheel in the game is on the left side, but on the mirrored artwork, it's on the right side. So I guess it looks like a car from England or something. You know, where the steering wheel is on the right side of the car. Oi, mate, get out of the way. Oh, fuck, my accent sucks. The game says that Lucky always dresses in fashionable suits and is the best driver on the force. Not sure what it says about Wild, because some kid peeled the fucking sticker off this unit. In fact, I've never seen a Lucky and Wild cabinet in mint condition, because kids would use it as a jungle gym. It, it's very climbable. Also, every photo online I find has it torn up too. In fact, this unit we reviewed doesn't even have the original pistols. They were replaced with the Uzis from Operation Wolf. Let's talk about the actual gameplay. You don't find trouble, trouble finds you. Each level opens with our heroes rolling up to a crime scene when their windshield is shot out leading to a high-speed chase. However, don't get too excited, the driving is really just to avoid road obstacles. It's pretty much a rail shooter disguised as a racing game. Slam down the gas pedal and hold the triggers and just spray everything in front of you until it dies, especially since your pistols have unlimited ammo and fire like machine guns. People, cars, trucks, helicopters, everything must die. Except the bosses you're forced to capture them alive. Both characters share the same life bar, because it's really the vehicle damage. So being able to dodge and accurately hit targets is very important. 
Player one should only be concerned with driving and using their weapon for deflecting throwable weapons, like grenades. Player two should really be focused on moving targets and creating high casualties. Or just get really wild and have player two use both guns at the same time. Just look how wild this is. Or for the ultimate gaming experience, get three people, one on the wheel, two on the guns, if you can fit three people. There's a ton of obstacles in your way, explosive barrels, a hailstorm of lead, and a plethora of grenades and Molotov cocktails. Not to mention the occasional ticking time bomb on your hood, or when a guy straight up jumps on your car. Watch out, here comes bad guy employee of the month! So there's some skill and strategy involved. There's tons of enemies and art in this game too, which is pretty impressive because they're all sprites, rather than the clunky 3D in Daytona USA, or the sloppy digitized photos of lethal enforcers. The backgrounds are very crisp and colorful. They even go from daytime through sunset to nighttime. The soundtrack is very cool, it's a swinging rock score. However, it'll be covered by the sounds of gunfire and engine sounds. The rearview mirror is interesting. You can see bad guys coming up behind you and, most importantly, it shows our protagonists at all times, which is pretty impressive considering the game came out before Doom, the same year as Wolfenstein 3D. You see the heroes in first person, but logically, in a mirror. Very smart. There's even voice samples too, so you get to hear them scream and rant every once in a while. Here's a showcase. That's it? Watch out! No! Oh my god! Creep! <laughs> I'll make you pay! <laughs> you try! Give it up! You sure do make life difficult. I love when you get a game over and the guys are just super sad about it. Continue? What are we going to do? Clearly, there are a lot of similarities between this game and movies. In the opening of Tango and Cash, Sylvester Stallone says, Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. And when Lucky and Wild turns on, you can hear Lucky say, Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Pretty similar, even though the creator said he never saw that movie when making this game. Some other tropes, they use the driving through the mall thing from Blues Brothers and Invasion USA with Chuck Norris. Escaping an exploding tunnel reminded me of Return of the Jedi, and the dune buggies in the desert gave me Mad Max vibes. Even the bullet sponge bosses look like they're from films. We got Mo Green from the ending of The Godfather, um, Bebop from Ninja Turtles, here's Meg Ryan, I guess, Greed from Full Metal Alchemist for you anime fans, or is that Ice T, Coop from Megas XLR, and finally John Polito from Blank Man. Nice! Yes, there is some crazy stuff in this game. Monster trucks driving 100 miles an hour, pimp cars shooting missiles, helicopters parachuting bombs, 500 luxury BMWs, laser and flamethrower weaponry, gas trucks dragging fiery death, a dune buggy army. But honestly, it all fits nicely into the film genre the game is an homage to. Sure, but something that doesn't make any sense is the Pink Cat's Garage. So after a day of gunning down armed gunmen, drug traffickers, and gun smugglers, turning cars and helicopters into twisted metal, the gritty realism and action stops when you slide into the Pink Cat's Garage. Here, a bunch of attractive women with cat ears repair your vehicle and serve you. What I assume is Surge Soda or Radioactive Poison? Same thing, really. And usually, when I take my car to be serviced, the mechanics aren't wearing denim cut-off booty shorts with tails sticking out of them, sadly. I'm pretty sure the cat girls are a reference to the Meowski gang from Namco's other arcade game Mappy, but who knows. If you get a high score, you get a bunch of kisses. If you don't get kisses, Lucky and Wild give them the puppy dog eyes. Also, I think you are getting the money for repairs from the bad guys you bust, instead of from, like, tax dollars. I'm pretty sure that's illegal as shit. <laughs> I'd love to see the internal affairs investigation of Lucky and Wild. Now, this game isn't perfect. The shooting feels floaty at times, or not really effective. And the driving is pretty lackluster. The gas and brake pedals don't really work. I mean, they work, but they don't really affect gameplay, because the enemies slow down or accelerate based on your own speed. It'd be great if you could just outspeed some enemies considering you are in a sports car, or maybe smash into them like in Chase HQ. Actually, some more variety in all the levels would be nice, maybe branching pathways to break up how linear it is. At one point, they introduced jumps, but nothing really sticks out between level to level, except for when you run over a couple of your fellow officers in a game glitch. Lucky and Wild is something you should definitely play, even if it's just emulated. 
Out of a 10, I give it a 9. 9 millimeter bullets, that is. Sadly, Bandai Namco hasn't really done anything with Lucky and Wild since the early 90s, aside from the name being used for a motor parts company in Ridge Racer. And honestly, I'm surprised more arcade games don't use the two-player driver shooter concept. I know Mario Kart Arcade GP has a team-up thing, but that's just Double Dash reworked. You see a lot of rail shooters and driving games, but not combined. Anyway, I really appreciate you reviewing this game with me, James. Yeah, Justin, no problem. If you're in an arcade, this is a game to look out for. And special thanks to Todd Tucky for letting us film B-roll at TNT Amusements years ago. Todd has a great YouTube channel where he repairs and sells old arcade machines. Oh, and thanks to Tony from Hack the Movies for filming with me, I guess. Lastly, we'll leave you with a fantastic song from the 1993 album Namco Video Game Graffiti Volume 9. It's a rearrangement of the Lucky and Wild ending theme called Ride On Tonight. And we're going to put that song over the ending sunset from the game, which really caps off this fantastic pixel-based buddy cop driving shooter. Thanks for watching.